What's up, great and glorious human beings? Good morning. I'm excited to come here today with you guys. I want and I've been wanting to share a recording of a talk that I gave at MSP GeekCon at its inaugural event in 2023, a couple years ago, and it never got recorded. And at the time, it was kind of like a going away letter, a love letter, as I actually said in the talk, to the MSP community, to those of you that I know that have worked long hours for people, those of you that I know that are, are heroes in your own right, and you have a hard time accepting that role. Because one of the things that we deal with as people in these positions, as, as technicians, as managers, as owners, we like to say that we're technologists. We like to say that we're working with tech and that's important to us and that we're really good at it and that humans are the hard part. In fact, we prize hard skills, technical advancement, networking, you know, all these things that are like tangible, we prize those over soft skills. And I think that's problematic. In fact, one of the things that I think is most problematic is we've got tons of books. I think I've got one over here. Um, tons of books that tell us this is how you should do things. If you want to be successful with people in the IT space, you need to do these 10 rules or 10 is 10 is actually kind. I think it's actually like a hundred, right? You break things down. Like each chapter is, you know, here's how you do this. And then it's a bunch of rules. And as someone who has a huge, uh, interest in many different things, you'll hear me often say that multi multidisciplinary endeavors are the future. That's part of the reason why I love MSPs because they are these crucibles, these hard, one skills done over a short period of time. Because of that, I always want to know what the law is behind the law. So if you're going to tell me to do 100 things, why, why is it 100 things? Why is it not one? What is the heart of the law that you're giving me? And so I'm excited to talk about this, the care and family meet computers, because I feel that if we can get to the heart of why we have all these rules and expectations, if we can get to the heart of how to take care of other people and how to look at soft skills as valuable versus, um, and not just valuable, attainable. A lot of times we're like, oh, well, that's just something that uh, women are good at. Or that's just something that you know certain people who have certain experience are good at. And um, I really would love for us to kind of turn that narrative around and consider that we all have soft skills, we all have these abilities, and if we can get to the heart of the law, if we get to the heart of the reason why we're given things to do, or why certain things work, or why certain things don't work, then we can actually help build our communities in better ways, we can help build our businesses in better ways, and we can help understand our own reasons why we're doing certain things, and how we can get to the rules beneath the rules that allow us to take care of each other and move our communities and our world forward. So with that said, um, I have worked in a number of industries um, and I've spent the majority of my time now uh, as an adult in the, well, in service in general, in the service industry, I waited tables, I've um, uh, I've been a, a graphic and a web designer. I worked for a help desk. I worked for an MSP. Worked for a help desk at a university. Um, I've just been I've been all over. I've run the gamut, and it's so interesting because a lot of the experiences that I've had, the parts of my life that have been the most impactful on my career as a professional now, are actually the ones from early on when I was a secretary at a temp agency, when I waited tables after my master's degree, a lot of my background is not in hard technology. Like it's not just in coding websites or um, answering help tickets. It was actually in putting aside what people are saying, what people are saying and what they're doing and saying, well, why are they saying that? Or why are they doing that? And how can I help contribute to them improving or being better? So, I mean, sometimes when you're just bringing someone a plate of food, that's all it is. But 
But a lot of times people treat you a certain way because of other things, other baggage that they're holding. And so if you can separate out, like when they, um, when someone's like, when, when you're trying to help them and they get snippy, there was one time um, <laughs> I was driving home and a girl had stopped in the middle of the road, like literally in the middle of the road, like a, a four lane highway. And she just stopped in the middle and I looked at her um, and she's staring at a, a, a dog that had been hit by a car. And the way that she was staring, I was like, oh, well, uh, this may be her dog. I'm going to go help her. So I go and I pull over and I pull a towel out of my car and I'm like, hey, do you need help? And she <laughs> looked at me and she's like, I don't need help. If you want to help anything, help that dog. And I was like, <laughs> I literally thought that this was your dog and I was coming to help you. And, um, you know, I was I, in that moment, I was like, oh, well, how, how dare you get mad at me? I'm just trying to help you. And I had to take a step back and say, you know, like she's probably experiencing a ton of other things that are causing her to act this way. Her license plate said that she was from a state away. Like it's possible that she's she's traveling for um, a business or she's traveling because she uh, had a loss in the family and she's dealing with other things. And the way that she's acting is not a reflection on me. And so one of the things that I think is most important as we determine how do we interact in this world is to take a step back and consider that anything that someone does or says to us is a result of their own programming of their hardware, software, and networking, which we'll talk about. So you have to consider that not everything is about you and, and that that's okay. In fact, that's a blessing. Um, you don't have to look at everything as it's about you. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about this is how can we better help ourselves, help each other, help our community. Um, and, and the other part of this is, as I mentioned, those books, <laughs> I mentioned those books that I read, I was really gung ho about it. I was like, this is going to be great. I, I love it. Um, it's talking about how, how to help people. Like that's the, that's the goal. It's like, okay, this is, this book is about being a, a good technician, um, a good person. And as I'm sitting there, um, reading it every chapter, I'm getting angry. Like there's 11 chapters and in each chapter, like there's 10 sub rules and it's, um, at the end of it, I just, I put the book down and it just felt like the author said, if you want to be successful, you have to do things my way. And I feel like that's one of the most dangerous things that we can do. Uh, we can say, you know, we see this all the time with our MSPs. Um, we see this all the time where it's like, well, what's your stack? What is, what is the, the thing that I'm missing and how can we compare? And, you know, the more MSPs that I've met, the more of you that I've seen and I've engaged with, the more I'm convinced that the real magic is you. And that sounds really woo-woo. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's not just that you and yourself are like just as you are is fine, which technically as you are is, is fine. Um, but the reality is I've worked with thousands of MSPs at this point and no two of you are alike. I've met those of you who are pastors, who are DJs, who were pizza delivery guys, who have a, a, a world of experience behind you. I just want to consider, I want to propose to you that there is not a single answer and that these books that tell you what the answer is are only a specific use case from a specific point in time, from a specific geography, in a specific location, in a specific niche market. <laughs> Some of those laws beneath those laws will apply elsewhere, but you don't have to follow all of them in order to be successful. And in fact, if you feel like you have to follow a list of rules to be successful, you may be missing the point altogether. So the care and feeding of meat computers, as you probably could tell, is how do we take care of our customers, of our technicians, of our teams, of our family and our loved ones. How do we, as technical people, as people who like to tear things apart and put them back together again, as people who find that we are most engaged and most interested in uh, when we're able to solve a puzzle in front of us, how, instead of looking at humans as a bother 
or as a pain or as a pain point, can we look at them as curious puzzles and bits of technology that are worth solving our whole lives? What I want you to do in this series of talks is I want you to flip the script. As a technical person, we've spent, we, we have the jokes all the time. We, we say, oh, you know, these users, they're just, they're not like computers. Computers, we can, we can tell them what to do and they just do it. Um, humans aren't like that. You know, like why, why can't my end users be just like this software I program? And um, I wanna flip the script and challenge you to start thinking about humans as the most valuable piece of technology that you've come across, as the most delicate bit of software, most elaborate piece of development work you've seen. Because that's my thesis, really. It's not that humans aren't enough like computers, it's that perhaps they are too much like them. So I hope that's interesting to you. Um, if it's not, yep, too bad. I'm going to make a couple videos anyway, and we're going to walk through these concepts together. I may at some point do just a complete one-to-one -one of um, of my the the talk that I gave. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, thoughts, ideas, drop them in the comments. Again, I'm Elle Copeland with Rising Tide, and I look forward to talking to you about the care and feeding of meat computers and how that can help impact us and our businesses together.